welcome to the chapter cell the basic unit of life this slide presents the overview of the chapter learning objectives by the end of this chapter you will be able to understand the importance of the cell explain the discovery of the cell identify the nucleus in plant cell and animal cell explain the discovery of the nucleus interpret the diversity in cells identify different groups in the transverse section of dicot stem identify different parts of nerve cell striated muscles and unstriated muscles know the size of different organisms introduction in lower classes we have learned that our earth is a beautiful place wherein different types of living organisms live happily all living beings are composed of cells from tiny masses to huge conifers and from invisible bacteria to huge blue whales all have a basic unit called cell all living organisms carry out certain functions do you know what is the basic structural unit of organ who discovered the cell diversity in cells what is the nucleus Let us try to answer these questions and learn more about the cell and its importance. Cell Cells are very small in size which cannot be seen through the naked eye. To observe these minute cells one needs a microscope. Around 350 years ago before the invention of microscope people were not aware of the living world that was not visible to the naked eye thereafter with the help of the microscope many scientists like athanasius kircher jan swammerdam antony van leeuwenhoek and robert hooke started observing and describing the unknown world among these scientists antony van leeuwenhoek was the first human to see living bodies like bacteria yeast protozoa red blood cells and the teeming life in a drop of water he prepared several types of magnifying glasses and used his lenses to study about different types of living and non-living things his microscope consisted of a single biconvex lens and was termed as the simple microscope to study about basic structures it is important to know the proper usage of microscope and the preparation of microscopic slides now let us study about the discovery of the cell discovery of the cell in the year 1665 a british scientist named robert hooke discovered a cell he developed a compound microscope by using two lenses in order to achieve greater magnification He studied a thin piece of cork, soft bark from oak tree under his microscope. From the microscope, he observed that the cork piece looked similar to the structure of honeycomb with many empty spaces or empty box-like structures. He thought that these empty spaces are made up of very small cavities. He called these cavities as cell. This was for the first time to be observed that living things consist of separate units called cell in latin the word cell refers to little room now let us see what robert hooke might have observed in the cork knowledge here let us take a matchstick and soak it in water for half an hour Next, with the help of a blade or a knife, cut the matchstick into thin pieces. Choose a thin piece and place it on a slide. 
Next, put a drop of water on the slide and cover it with a cover slip. Now place the slide under a microscope and observe it. It is observed that the cells of the matchstick under a microscope are similar to the cells of the cork of an oak tree as we have observed previously. From this experiment, we have learned that the cells of a matchstick and the cork of an oak tree are similar. This is because both the cells of cork and matchstick are dead cells. The discovery of cell by Robert Hooke was a milestone in the history of science. Here, let us perform an act. Take a piece of onion and cut out a small fleshy portion from the bulb. Break this fleshy piece into two halves and you will find a thin transparent peel holding the piece together. Now, take out the peel and cut a small piece from it. Next, take a permanent slide and place a peel on it. Next, add a drop of water on the slide and spread the peel evenly. Cover the slide with a cover slip. Next, place the permanent slide mount under a microscope and observe it. Draw the image of what you have observed along with labels. It is observed that all the cells are similar. The cells are in rectangular or linear in shape and all the cells are firmly bounded together. From the experiment, we learned that all the cells of onion are similar in shape irrespective of the size. The onion peel cells are the plant cells. Now, let us precautions. Before starting the activity, some precautions ought to be followed. Wash the spoon thoroughly before using it. Do not scrape the cheek too hard because it may injure you. Scrapped material should be spread uniformly on the slide. See that there should not be any air bubbles under the cover slip. Excess stains should be drained off on the permanent slide. Now, let us do the activity. Take a permanent slide and add a drop of water to it. Next, take a wooden spoon or a toothpick. With the help of the toothpick, scrape the inner surface of the cheek. Note, scrape the cheek with the flat end side of the toothpick. Now, remove the toothpick from the mouth and place it in a drop of water taken on slide. Next, spread the toothpick in a drop of water to enable our cheek cells to spread out. Now, remove the toothpick from the slide and cover it with a cover slip. Now, place the slide under a microscope and observe it. It is observed that the shape of the cheek cells are irregular. A dark colored border is observed for each cheek cell. From the experiment, we learned that the cells of cheek cells are irregular in shape. Knowledge. Here, let us study about the significant observations of cells by Robert Brown. A scientist named Robert Brown made great contributions towards cells. Before Robert Brown, it is believed that another scientist named Felici Fontana have observed the nucleus in the epithelial cells, which is the outermost layer of the animal body in the 18th century. But the credit for observing the nucleus in different kinds of cells and finding that it was an integral part of all cells goes to Robert Brown. While observing the cells in orchard leaves, 
Brown observed a small near circular spot which was slightly more opaque than the surrounding parts. He stated that this structure was present inside the cell and he named it as nucleus. Among the different parts of the cell, the nucleus is the most important and well-known part. He also observed this nucleus in all the other cells. He found this nucleus in the year 1831. There was a gap of around 180 years between the year of first observing the cells around 1650 to the year of observing the nucleus 1831. The image shown on the screen was the plant cell which was observed by Robert Brown when he observed the nucleus for the first time. Three stomata can also be clearly seen in the image. These stomata are the breathing pores through which a plant exchanges gases with the atmosphere. Knowledge. Here let us perform. Take a piece of onion and cut out a small fleshy portion from the bulb. Break this fleshy piece into two halves and you will find a thin transparent peel holding the piece together. Now, take out the peel and cut a small piece from it. Next, take a permanent slide and place a peel on it. Now, add one or two drops of safranin and methylene blue to the slide. Next, cover the slide with a cover slip and leave it aside for 5 minutes. Next, add water dropwise from one side of cover slip and remove the extra water with the help of filter paper from the other side. Now, place the permanent slide mount under microscope and observe it. Blue colored spots are observed in each cell. A thick border is observed for each cell. In between the dark colored spot and the border of the cell, a jelly-like substance is observed. The blue colored spot observed within the cell is called nucleus. The dark outer boundary of a cell is called cell membrane. The jelly-like substance present between the nucleus and cell membrane is called cytoplasm. Now, let us observe the nucleus in our cheek cells and find the difference between the cells of an onion peel and the cheek cells. Here, let us take a permanent slide and add a few drops of methylene blue to it. Next, take a toothpick and with its help, scrape the inner surface of the cheek. Note, scrape the cheek with the flat end side of a toothpick. Remove the toothpick from the mouth and place it on the dye and spread the toothpick in the dye to enable our cheek cells to spread out. Remove the toothpick from the dye and cover it with a cover slip. Next, place the permanent slide mount under the microscope and observe it. A dark blue colored spot is observed at the center of each cell. An outer boundary is observed for each cell. In between the dark colored spot and the border of the cell, a jelly-like substance is observed. The dark blue colored spot observed within the cell is called nucleus. The outer boundary of a cell is called cell membrane. The jelly-like substance present between the nucleus and the cell membrane is called cytoplasm. The cell membrane gives a definite shape to the cell. It selectively allows the substances to pass in or out of the cell. When compared to cheek cells, the outer covering of onion peel cells is much clearer. This is because another layer called cell wall is present over the cell membrane. 
the cell wall provides rigidity to the cell. The nucleus is present in both the onion peel cells and the cheek cells. But in case of onion peel cells, the nucleus is not in the center, whereas in case of the cheek cells, the nucleus is present in and around the center. The cytoplasm is a very heterogeneous material. Cytoplasm contains of membrane-bounded nucleus called cell organelles and complex chemicals. The cell organelles help in carrying out several functions within the cell. Now, let us learn about the diversity in cells. We have observed that nearly all cells of onion peel have a similar structure and shape irrespective of their sizes. There are millions of living organisms in nature and each of these cells has a different shape, size and varies in the number of cells. To understand this more clearly, let us observe some different cells. Some organisms like amoeba, paramecium, spirogyra and chlamydomonas are called single-celled or unicellular organisms because they have only one cell in their body. This single cell is capable of performing all the life processes like respiration, excretion, secretion, growth, obtaining food and reproduction. Knowledge Here, let take a small portion of plant stem. Cut the thin cross section of the stem with the help of a razor or blade. Now take a watch glass with water and place the cross section of stem in it. Next, transfer the thin section of stem from the watch glass onto the permanent slide with the help of a brush. Next, cover the slide with a cover slip and place it under microscope. Observe the slide under microscope. It is observed that the cells have different shapes and structure. Four different types of tissues are observed from the microscope. From the experiment, we learned that the cross-section of stem consists of four groups. Group A cells form the outermost layer of the stem and they provide a definite shape and protection to the stem. Group B cells occupy the major portion of the stem. These groups of cells have special organs that help in carrying out the process of photosynthesis. Group C cells join together to form long structures that help in carrying food and water to the entire plant body. Group D cells are present at the center of young stem and they form a hollow structure in case of mature stem. Thus, different shapes of cells performing different functions are observed in a single organism. Knowledge. Now let us take a permanent slide of nerve cell from the slide box of your school laboratory. Take a compound microscope. Place the slide under the microscope and observe it. It is observed that it is looking like a tree having many branches with no leaves. The head or cell body has a tail-like structure. The top and bottom of the cell body consist of root-like structures. It is observed that one of the roots from the top of the cell body is extending to different parts of the body. It is observed that the head part of the cell body consists of a ball-like structure. It is also observed that fine projections are extending from the cell body of a nerve cell. The small projections root-like structure present on the top of cell body are called dendrites. A long projection of root extending from the head of the cell body is called axon. Axon is surrounded by a sheath called myelin sheath. Myelin sheath is made up of squan cells and they consist of a fatty material. 
This myelin sheath is disrupted at regular intervals called nodes of Ranvier. The nerve cell body is situated either in our brain or spinal cord or very close to the spinal cord in a location called dorsal or ventral root ganglion. Nerve cells are the only cells in our body which do not have the ability to regenerate. Knowledge. Here, let us take a permanent slide of striated muscle from the slide box of your school laboratory. Take a compound microscope. Place this slide under the microscope and observe it. Note the observations. It is observed that the muscles are very long and are cylindrical in shape. Dark and oval shaped structures are observed. Alternate dark and light colored bands are observed on each muscle. A thin lining membrane is observed on the outer side. Striated muscles are also called striped muscles because each striated muscle shows alternate dark and light bands called striations. Striated muscles are cylindrical, unbranched and have many nuclei in the body. Dark and oval shaped structures on muscles are called nuclei. Striated muscles consist of a thin outer lining membrane called sarcolemma. Functions of striated muscle Striated muscles are strong and powerful. These muscles undergo rapid contraction and relaxation. These muscles provide force for locomotion and all other voluntary movements of the body parts. Let us perform an activity to observe this. Take a permanent slide of unstriated muscle from the slide box of your school laboratory. Take a compound microscope. Place the slide under the microscope and observe it. It is observed that the cells are long with pointed ends. At the center of each muscle, an oval-shaped structure is observed. Small gaps are observed in between each cell. It is observed that each cell is covered by a thick membrane. Unstriated muscles are also called smooth muscles. An oval-shaped structure present in each cell is called a nucleus. The cell structure of unstriated muscles is very simple. The cells of these muscles are long with pointed ends, spindle-shaped. Each muscle cell is enclosed in a plasma membrane. A single nucleus is present at the center of the cytoplasm or sarcoplasm. The muscle fibers do not contain any striations or bands on them. Hence, they are called smooth or unstriated muscles. Functions Unstriated muscles will not be under the control of our will. Hence, they are called involuntary muscles. Example, movement of food in the elementary canal or the contraction and relaxation of blood vessels or involuntary movements. Now, let us learn about the size and shape of amoeba. From the previous experiments on nerve cell, striated muscle and unstriated muscles, we have observed that each of them contains the nucleus. But the size and shape of these cells vary considerably and all of these cells are ultimately determined by the specific functions of these cells. An unicellular organism like amoeba has no definite shape and size. If it wants to move it, keeps on changing the shape of its body in the appropriate direction to form a temporary foot or a pseudopodia, where pseudo means false and podia means feet. The amoeba takes in food by using pseudopodia. This pseudopodia looks like temporary finger projections of the cell surface which fuses over the food particle 
forming food vacuole. These temporary projections appear and disappear as amoeba moves or feeds. Knowledge Are the cells in an elephant larger than the cells in a man? You are the biggest animal on the earth. But what is the bigness? You are the slave of the man who is smaller than you. Do you know that the body of almost all the living beings, including you, is made up of tiny cells like me. Do you know the fact that in the human body, your master consists of more than 75 trillion cells? Now, can you imagine how big I am? Here, let us study about the size of the cell. From the above words of the cell, we can guess how big a cell is. The size of these cells in living organisms may be as small as the millionth of a meter or as large as a few centimeters. Most of these cells are very small which cannot be seen with the naked eye. They can be observed only with the help of a microscope. Some of these cells can be seen through our naked eye. The smallest size of cell is found in bacteria that is around 0.1 to 0.5 micrometers. The largest size of the cell is found in the egg of ostrich which is around 17 centimeters by 18 centimeters. The size of cell in human kidney and liver is around 20 to 30 micrometers. The size of human nerve cell is about 90 to 100 centimeters. The size of cell is related to its function. For example, the size of nerve cell in both man and elephant is same, that is, they are long and branched, and also they perform a similar function, that is, transferring the message. Generally, the size of an organism depends mainly on the number of cells, but not on the size of the cell. Cells are of different shapes, sizes, and number. Note. 1 meter equal to 100 centimeters. 1 centimeter equal to 10 millimeters. 1 millimeter equal to 100 micrometers. 1 micrometer equal to 1000 nanometers. Knowledge Match the following. So keywords List of keywords are shown on the screen. Summary let us recap the highlights of this chapter. All living beings are composed of cells, from tiny masses to huge conifers, and from invisible bacteria to huge blue whales, all have a basic unit called cell. Cells are very small in size, which cannot be seen through the naked eye. Antony van Leeuwenhoek was the first human to see living bodies like bacteria, yeast, protozoa, red blood cells, and the teeming life in a drop of water. In the year 1665, a British scientist named Robert Hooke discovered a cell. The cells of a matchstick and the cork of oak tree are similar. This is because both the cells of cork and matchstick are dead cells. Before Robert Brown, another scientist named Felis Fontana observed the nucleus in the epithelial cells, which is the outermost layer of animal body in the 18th century. Robert Brown discovered the nucleus in the year 1831. Stomata are the breathing pores through which a plant exchanges gases with the atmosphere. Plant cells differ from those of animal cells in having an additional layer on top of the cell membrane called cell wall. There are millions of living organisms in nature and each of these cells has different shapes sizes and vary in the number of cells. Organisms like amoeba, paramecium, spirogyra and chlamydomonas are called single-celled or unicellular organisms. Four different types of tissues are observed in the stem of a plant. The small projections, root-like structures present on the top of cell body are called dendrites. 
A long projection of root extending from the head of the cell body is called axon. Striated muscles are also called striped muscles because each striated muscle shows alternate dark and light bands called striations. Unstriated muscles are also called smooth muscles. The size of the cells in living organisms may be as small as the millionth of a meter or as large as a few centimeters. Read the question. Follow up work. Take up the following activities. Collect different kinds of leaves and observe the shapes of epidermal cells under a microscope and fill the given tabular column. Observe the figures of bone cell, red blood cells and white blood cells under microscope and label its parts. Collect information about their functions. Observe a small piece of a green leaf under the microscope and notice the different types of cells and groups of cells you have observed. Drawing Skills Onion Peel Cell Nerve Cell